going. Okay. Well, I'm excited. We got a pretty cool guest coming on yeah, next, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty good. He's pretty, he's pretty good. good. Uh, what, what a difference a year makes, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right, let's bring him out. Your quarterback, number eight, Kenny Pickett. <laughs> No, right here, right here, right here. Wow. Got Kenny Pickett, man. Nice job, Cam. Wow, Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Pickett. Ken, you want us to call you Kenny? Ken? Uh, Big Ken? Kenneth? How do you feel about it? Big Ken to you. Oh, oh Big wow, Ken. Like wow. <laughs> what a difference a year it makes. You know, at first he would have been like, Hi, my name's Kenneth. Nice to, nice to meet you. <laughs> but now he's, he's, he's Big Kenny. That's it. After being locker mates with you for a year, <laughs> that's how it switches. <laughs> I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I Sharing don't. a locker with you would be. He I've doesn't seen share it. a I've locker seen with me, okay? All the brothers, too. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Both of them. Dirty. Y'all are not clean. We no, are very no, clean. No, no. So you don't like being my locker mate now? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Wow. It's all right. Okay. okay. You get a lot of packages. You still got to check your mail, by the way. I've been there. Okay. <laughs> Stacking I, I, up. I got I to gotta switch these questions up because <laughs> we might have to dive deep on this one. Um, how does it feel to be a year removed from the draft? It feels good, man. I like sitting on this couch better than the couch I was on a year ago, <laughs> man. I know exactly where I'm going to be this season. Um, I love being here. So uh, it feels great. Take us through that moment. Um, you know, you're at the draft, you're waiting for your name to get called, uh, and you see that button push for Kenny Pickett. Yeah, man, it's it's special. Um, you can't describe it. It's like you've, you've worked since you were like five years old. I remember picking up a football. I always wanted to be, you know, a first-round quarterback and play in the NFL and um, chase my dreams and was there with everybody. It was like a place, you know, packed out like this with people that I love and care about that helped me get to this moment. So um, it was incredibly special. Did you uh, do any, any any rituals beforehand to make sure uh, you were ready for your moment? Uh, maybe just had a cold one before I sat on the couch <laughs> to get ready to go. I mean, that was about it. That was about it. I had to ease the nerves somehow. You're, you're in no control when you're sitting on the couch. You're just watching the picks go by and uh, hope you hear your name and your phone rings. So that's right. You didn't even go to the draft. Why didn't you? I wanted to have, like, all my family there. I wanted all my friends there. There's so many people that helped me get to, to where I am now. So I wanted to make sure that... I could, you know, celebrate and enjoy that with everybody. I appreciate that. That's what I was thinking at the time. Um, when I talk about that, one thing I like to mention, I had a bunch of my buddies there uh, at my house when I was getting drafted. Uh, and a couple of my buddies, they wanted to play a joke on me because I'm at the end of the first round uh, and I haven't gotten picked. And they're like, hey, if you don't get picked, we can just go to the movies. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, they all were just like, give me a hard time. And I was like, now is not the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's not much that can kind of break that until you get the call. I mean, you're no. just, everyone's on edge, and everyone's just so nervous. Um, but once you get it, man, it's, there's, there's nothing like it. <laughs> well, Kenny, obviously we've heard you put on 15 pounds of muscle, right, this offseason. What was the reasoning for that, and what did you do to achieve it? Yeah, um, you know, from, like, training for the draft, and you want to be lean, you want to run well, and you have all the testing. Um, you know, I went in at, like, 218. I finished at, like, 213, and that was just, you know, I just felt a little too light. Um, you know, it's a long season, and I want to make sure that I'm physically ready to, to be playing in February. So I think going into, you know, camp at, like, 225-ish should be, should be good. Mm -hmm. So with that velocity, we're expecting some quicker passes, right? Uh, hopefully all the above, quicker passes. <laughs> I think I can run faster. I think I got, you know, I think I'm checking all the boxes. Okay, so we need to see this firsthand. We got two footballs right here. Um, we need you to sign these, and then I want you to throw them out into the stairs. You got it. Make sure you take off the headset. We don't want you to get a whiplash on that. No, that's good. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. I try to get him. I try to get him. We got one more. We got more. Where's an eight jersey at? Oh, yeah, look yeah. for the eights. Looking eight. for the eights. There he is. Or so. Oh. 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 oh there, 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 you there you go. Like Looking him. like George Pickens yeah, back there. No, I like it. Nice. Not meatball? It didn't look like meatball back there? Nah. <laughs> oh, okay. But talking about meatball, we got to talk about your diet. How did you gain these 15 pounds? Um, 
Cold ones? <laughs> oh, no, that'd be the wrong, that'd be the wrong 15. Okay. That's like a freshman 15. Um, I think there was a smooth, when I was down in Florida training, there was like a Smoothie King, and I could get like a 1,500 calorie smoothie to start the day. So that's how I pretty much started every day. And uh, just lift and train in two, uh, twice a day, and you know, I got there eventually. I like that. You were asked in the interview before the Super Bowl if you were going to, and you said the only time that you're going to go to that game is when you're playing in it. Yep. How are you going to get to the Super Bowl next year in Las Vegas? Uh, it's more of a we question. Um, you know, this guy right next to me is going to be a huge part of that. Um, it's, a t it's a team effort, and uh, the margin for error is really small in the NFL. That's how I've learned in my first, my first season. It comes down to that last possession majority of the time. You're not seeing blowouts, you know, 14, 20-point wins. It just doesn't happen often. Um, so I think it's a team effort. I think we have a more veteran team coming back. Um, I gained a lot of valuable experience in the 12 games that I played, so I'm definitely going to use that to, to my advantage. Another thing you're using to your advantage is you don't have to think about this draft anymore. But a couple of your friends, a couple of your teammates are out there, Jordan Addison, um, some other guys as well. But are you texting Mike T right now trying to get your guy drafted? Who? Any of them. Any of them? I mean, I was in there. I'm, I'm all for, you know, the guys that I play with at Pitt hold, like, a special place in my heart. And, you know, we won a championship there. And you know how special that is when you, you accomplish the goals that you set out with with your teammates. So, man, I'm, I'm pulling for those guys. I was so excited to see Kalaja go and, and, mm -hmm. and Jordan last night. I mean, it's unbelievable to, to have all that work you put with people and then you see them, you know, achieve their dreams. It's, it's special. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, maybe a jersey swap with those guys somewhere down the line. Like well, that. Kenny, this podcast is produced by Peyton Manning's production company. Now, I understand you have a story related to Peyton, and he played a big part in you going in the first round. Could you tell the fans about that, please? Yeah, yeah. So I was at the Manning camp twice, and uh, I asked Peyton about, you know, advice on either going to the NFL or coming back to Pitt for my final year. Um, and I really wanted to, you know, exhaust every resource that I had, whether that was coaches or guys like Peyton, you know, who hold a lot of weight in the league. And, um, you know, his advice was to go back, and he just gave me, you know, his experience of how he, you know, finished with a championship. And, you know, looking back on it, like, that was something I really wanted to accomplish and set out to do. And usually when you're on championship teams, good things happen to, to the players on them. So um, we were able to go back, and, and I was able to go back, and we accomplished that and um, probably had one of the more memorable years of my life, you know, up to that point and was able to get drafted in the first round by, you know, the Steelers, and it was incredibly special. All right, let's fast forward. Uh, week five, I don't like to bring up these moments. Um, we lost that game to the Bills. Um, but we got to see a different side of Kenny. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you got to go against the guy in Shaq Lawson. 6'3", 265 pounds. Um, as a defender, when a quarterback comes at me, I, I, I want to bury him. Uh, and I want to take advantage of you know, small quarterbacks. You're not a small quarterback anymore. Uh, <laughs> and so take us through that moment when you were thinking about fighting Shaq Lawson when he gave you a little bit uh, after the play. Yeah, I didn't really think too much. It was just kind of a reaction. <laughs> like, you know, we were, we were getting whooped. I wasn't too happy. Uh, yeah. I wasn't too happy with the hit. It's, it's football. It happens. But uh, I just think I play with a little bit of an edge, and, you know, sometimes it happens. Cam, as a vet, though, what do you say to Kenny? Like, Kenny, come on. You can't be fighting Shaq Lawson out there, right? Yeah, I feel like I've had to say this to a lot of my quarterbacks because we've gotten in a lot of fights over the years, um, i.e. Mason when we went to Cleveland. That's a totally different story. We're a totally different time. Jeez, I didn't think we were bringing that up today. But if we're going to talk about Kenny, I like the fire. I like, you know, you know, you getting into it, but that's in practice. We're not doing this in the game. I need you all four quarters for every single game. So... Stay out of the way and let, let the big folks take care of that. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Um, I did some research, came across a great story of you when you were 10 years old in New Jersey. Wow. That's a long time ago. Long time. Um, your receivers come back to the huddle, and they tell you to throw them the ball, and 10-year-old Kenny Pickett shoots back with, we have one football. I'm going through to throw it to the kid who gives us the best chance to score. Uh, where does a 10-year-old kid get the swagger like that? I don't know, man. That's a, that's a good question. I, my coach, when he told me, I don't even remember saying that. So that was like when he, <laughs> the first time that story broke was kind of the first time that I heard it. So um, I just think, you know, how my dad raised me and, you know, he played in college and, um, you know, I always wanted to go to the NFL and, 
Um, so he knew my dreams and aspirations and kind of guide me and, and show me what I needed to do to get there. So um, I think I kind of followed his lead and how he raised me. So are you telling Connor that right now? Like, uh, chill out, bro? I tell Meepaw all the time. <laughs> Meepaw is going to be doing a lot for us this year, so I'm, I'm excited to play with him again. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words, Caesar's Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Missing syrup for your pancakes? Or you just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer? Burnt your last piece of toast? Avocado's gone bad? Or is the hot sauce bottle empty? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your favorite restaurant, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a DashFast membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want them. Get 50% of your first DoorDash order up to a $10 value when you use CAM at checkout. Limited time offer terms apply. That's 50% off up to $10 on a $15 minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code CAM. Don't forget, that's code CAM for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. I want to talk about this, though. Um, you're 24 years old. You're 14 years later. You got a bunch of different we uh, weapons. Um, how do you distribute the ball out now? Yeah, I think it goes game plan. And like I always tell the guys, I mean, some, some days it might be Deontay, some days it might be George, some days it might be Pat. However the game kind of plays out and who they try to take away, I actually have to go with the ball, you know, a, a, another way. So if they're, if they're double teaming George, obviously Pat and Deontay are going to be open and just vice versa. So um, it's all about what the defense does and, and dictates kind of where I go with the football. Okay. I just got word. I got a special gift for you. You ready? Ready. You guys ready? All right, and now our first round pick from the 2023 draft, the new security guard, Broderick Jones. Come have a seat with us, young man. Roger, how you doing, buddy? Hey, man, I'm good. Glad to be here. Look you met your new, you look met your new quarterback? Kenny is, yeah. Kenny is look, at, look at this smile at right smile, now, guys. Man. Look at that smile. Where can you get this yeah. first? Kenny, Kenny with his first round pick. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, man, me too. Me too. I'm feeling that. Roderick, how's the, how's the last 24 hours been? Man, crazy. <laughs> Ain't been able to get no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that way for a while. I already know it. Kenny, what does he need to look forward to? Uh, I mean, like you said, no sleep, a lot, lot of rookie meetings, but um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to play with him on Sundays um, from everything I've seen and what I've heard. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape, you know, up front now. All right, Broderick, you're from Lithonia, Georgia, man. 3,000 people there. We almost got double that here. What's it like? What's it like just being a Pittsburgh Steeler now, man? From Lithonia, It's different. Georgia. Is it different? <laughs> it is, but I feel like I'm at home. Yeah? You know, uh, just the environment, the atmosphere, you know, it feels like I'm back home at Georgia. Yeah. So. Did you think the Steelers were going to trade up to get you? No, nah, I didn't think they were going to trade up to get me, but I knew they were interested. Yeah. You know, so. I like that. I want you to, uh, I just heard about you picking your number. Uh, share with the folks that are here today, you know, why you chose that number. Yeah, so I chose 77 for my uh, teammate who uh, had passed away in a car crash not too long ago. So, you know, I just wanted to dedicate that to him. So I chose to let him live through me and wear his number. I like that. All you know. right. 
the big thing, and Kenny might be able to tell you about this, the rookie dinner. <laughs> Where are you taking the guys, and is the bank account ready for what they're about to do to you? It is now. They got NIL. They're ready. good. Uh, the bank account is not ready. <laughs> I need a couple more weeks, y'all. <laughs> Kenny, nah, any suggestions where you should take them? Oh, uh, I mean, the O-line's a little different than the quarterbacks. QBs, we went to Del Frisco's, but there's like three of us, so it's okay to, to go to Del Frisco. I wouldn't recommend that with the line, but I'd probably pick a different spot. But. Yeah, a Golden Corral or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I'll say this. Some of these guys got creative, though. You know, there was a time where you take them out to a fancy restaurant. Now these guys got chefs, so they're not even paying out of the pocket. You know, they're just going to Giant Eagle making something. So, <laughs> Where was your rookie dinner at? Oh, man. Uh, it was at a place called Davio's. It closed, um, but I had to take care of the limo. Uh, Mitch, uh, my D-line coach at the time, he would fly in all the food. So I had to pay, like, double everything. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Get ready. I I I'll give some suggestions for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of you, uh, your tape. Uh, I love the way you compete. I love the way you are uh, a nasty individual, uh, not just on the football field, but on the basketball court. <laughs> Speak to that a little bit. I gave those days up a long time ago. But, <laughs> you know, I still got a little bit in me. Um, I still mess around. Every now and again, just to stay in shape, make sure my feet stay good for to be able to pr protect for this guy right here, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, that's really why I play basketball, you know, just because it helped me stay in shape, uh, help my footwork. It really helped me on the football field as well. So, you know, I just did it for as long as I can. Um, Unfortunately, I stopped growing, so. <laughs> <I had laughs> That's for every it football player. It just, once it stops, it's just like, yeah, you got to get basketball up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, um, you know, about your game, you gave them zero sacks in the last two years, two national championships, um, ran a 4.97 at the combine. Um, do you prefer run blocking or pass blocking? Man, whatever wins games. I like That's it. That's what I want to do. Good answer. Y'all want to know why we drafted this, this dude? There's a play from the combine where you were going up <laughs> against our O-line coach, our assistant O-line coach, Isaac, uh, and you threw Isaac out of the way. And, you know, it, you don't see that a lot of combines. You don't see it happen. But when you see a grown man, oh, there he is. There's Isaac right there. He's, back in the, <laughs> he's hiding back there. <laughs> Isaac, you all right? Okay, okay. He got thrown out of the way. It, it wasn't a pretty sight. Your game's been compared to Trent Williams, all pro from the 49ers. Do you think that's a fair comp? I do, yeah. you know, just because of the way he plays. He plays physical. He plays fast. He's very athletic, you know. I see a lot of that in my game, so I can say the same. Any other O-linemen you like to model your game after? Uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of guys, you know, like the Jamari Sawyer, the Andrew Thomas, the Trent Williams, the Laramie Tunzel, you know, it's, it's a lot of different players that I watch and you know, that I admire. So, two, two things. What are you going to do to keep this guy upright? Man, first of all, I'm going to come in and give 110% every day, you know, because that's where it started. I got to learn the playbook, like the back of my hand, because without that, you know, I can't be able to play and be on the field to protect my guy. So, you know, that's first and foremost, and, you know, just soak up all the knowledge I can from the older cats. And then last thing, you see that camera right there, the one with the red light on it? Yeah. I want you to tell Steeler Nation what they're getting in you. Man, Steeler Nation. Y'all are getting the dog, baby. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Broderick, Kenny, appreciate you so much for coming on today. Oh, I appreciate, appreciate you coming having me, man. So first of all, I want to say thank you to Broderick for joining us. Kenny, thank you for staying. Absolutely. We got some more stuff to ask you. I got to start grilling you because you talk too much mess about me. <laughs> how, how bad are you at categories? Why do you Not do this TJ. every time? <laughs> Not as bad as TJ. Anytime Kenny is brought up, you always got to bring up categories. Yes, Tony. because we know TJ is the worst. But why are you going after him for it? Because it's fun. It's like our inside joke, TJ's bad at board games. <laughs> At least he's bad at something. He's bad at something, man. I, mean, I didn't think he was. Right. Um, let's talk about – where am I at? Let's talk about the offensive line now. There's been a lot of changes. 
Um, you know, and I think we can see from the outside uh, that they're they're looking to protect you. How do you feel? It was how do you feel it was handled, and how do you feel going forward? Yeah, I mean, you look at the preseason and how much those guys like you know grew. I think they were the best you know position group we had offensively. Those guys just continue to improve, and they put a lot of time in. We work we work a lot together, so I have a lot of love for every guy up there. Um, I think they, they added some great pieces that are going to come in and compete and, and push each other every day in camp. And uh, I think overall it's just going to make us better as an offense. How do you feel about the new addition of Allen Robinson, a veteran receiver? Yeah, yeah, A-Rob, he's the man. I've, I've talked to him for about two weeks now and, and seen him in the facility every day. He just has a veteran presence to him. He's seen a lot of football. He's played a lot, and he's got a lot to bring to the table as well. So, um, you know, from an IQ standpoint for the wide receivers and myself, a guy that I can, you know, pick his brain and, and really learn from, um, you know, I'm really excited to play with him. I know you want the ball in your hands, but, you know, I know Najee's going to be mad at you if you just abandon the run. No, Na Najee's going to get plenty of touches for sure. Najee, <laughs> Najee's a tough guy to tackle. I've seen it firsthand, so I hope you get in the ball a lot. All right, Kenny, you have a ball that's currently in the Hall of Fame for having the only rookie quarterback to ever have back-to-back game-winning drives. Did you even know that ball was at the Hall of Fame? And how cool is it to have a ball in Canton yeah, already? I didn't, I didn't know until someone sent me the tweet, man. It's pretty, it's pretty special, um, you know, especially the, the first game, winner being, you know, on the night for Franco and um, going, being able to go out there and win in that kind of fashion, I think it was just real, real fitting for, for the story and, and how it finished. So, um, and then on the road at Baltimore, obviously, in a hostile environment um, against a rival like that. And, uh, I, I just really loved everything about it, man. I, the, the rivalry, the, the competitiveness, the, the, the violence of the game. Um, it kind of fit everything I've ever wanted to, you know, in, in big time games. So it was cool to go out there and, and win. I would just say this. I want you to talk about real quick. We got a little bit uh, time left, but I want you to talk about Franco calling you, your name for the draft. How do you feel about that? It's, it's crazy, man. Like, he called my name for the draft and then I had my first, you know, game winning drive you know, and the night that they dedicated it to him. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't believe that's a coincidence. I think everything happens for a reason, man. It was unbelievably special um, to go out there and, and do that for him and his family. Last thing, that camera right there. <laughs> Message to the fans. Message to the fans and to, to everybody here, like from the, from the bottom of my heart since I got drafted, since I played in this city, um, I have so much love for, for the city of Pittsburgh and I really appreciate you guys. And, I'll give everything I got to you guys, I promise you that. So I'm excited for the season.